everybody, welcome to the Joe Jaguar Show one more time. This is Joe, and this is Joey. See? And both of us got a box right now, and I just started opening the top, and then it's like, wait a minute, I need to show everybody what it is. I think I know what it is, but we're gonna go check it out. So let me go put Joey on the windowsill, right? And then he'll have a little fun, and then I can have a little fun. Okay. Okay, so, as I said, I was just starting to unbox this guy, and then it's like, what am I doing? I need to show my fans what I got. Now, hopefully you guys are not gonna think I'm bragging or anything, but this is probably the granddaddy of all telescopes. So, ooh, it's like one box in another box. I got this from somebody, and yes, it is used. It's not new. I could not afford this new. Um, actually, some people would probably say they couldn't even afford it used. Uh, I will not say how much it is. You can Google it yourself if you really want to, but why would you? Okay, so here's the certificate. So I think it's a 2011 model. Let's check this guy out. How the hell do I get this guy out? Now, I'm not sure. I was just about to say this is probably the most biggest telescope I've ever had. But I don't think biggest is the right word. Because I don't think it's bigger than I've ever had. Maybe it's the best, the most expensive. I, I don't know. Whichever way. Uh, Get all this off. Ooh, they were right. This thing is huge. So I guess I guess I'll let you guys know. And maybe you can see it by what it is right now. This is a Takahashi six-inch TOA uh, Apple refractor. Like I said, it's probably the granddaddy of all telescopes. This was this is what people probably would dream of. Ah. Um, yeah, that is huge for a dew cap comparing to my six inch F8 Evo Star. That dew cap dew cap is twice as big. Yeah, that is big. Now, the, the fella I got it from um, is from Calgary. And um, I've dealt with him a couple times, and he dealt with me a couple times. So, kind of, so right now it's at its shortest uh, configuration. And he told me how big and wide that sucker is. Um, so that's six inch F 7.3, I believe, uh, Takahashi, uh, TOA, uh, Apple, Apple refractor. Let's just take a look at that lens here. Actually, I'm going to compact it back. Let me get you guys a little closer and give you a, a little shot. Yep, so here, here you can see it's 150 millimeter, which is a six inch F 1100 millimeter focal length, which makes it F 7.3. And it's a triple ortho apochrom apochromatic. And again, it doesn't look very long, 
Um, and as you guys probably saw in one of my other video, I went the first one that I did of that guy. And what I talked about that guy was I said I wish that Skywatcher made it in a um, six inch F7 instead of an F8 because an F8 is just so big. I mean, you can go back to my, it's my third video, I believe. And you'll see I said that. So I'm not just saying it because this one is F7. Um, again, and as I said on that first video that I did, the Skywatcher Evo Star 6 inch, a 6 inch F8 is really long. And I've had 6 inch F8s before, and they just become very tiresome, very heavy, very long. So, and again, if you don't believe me, go back, and I said that way over a year ago. My preference would be, because, you know, if you have something like a 90 millimeter, 102 millimeter, even my Mead triplet is 130 millimeter F7, it's a perfect length. But once you get to the six inch, an F8 becomes really long. And your mount, it's almost like a teeter-totter. It really swings with the smallest vibrations, winds, uh, type of thing. But of course, the reason why Skywatcher did uh, an F8 is because, you know, they want the image to be good. They want the color correction to be as good as possible in a doublet. And that's why they made it that long. But, you know, I think portability is also key as well. And if it's just too heavy, and after a few months, if you're not going to use it, it's just not worth it then. So that's why I said my preference in a six inch size would be an F7. Just because it's just a lot uh, length. Um, it will be more stable under the same tripod and mount. Um, but, it, it, you know, that's, that's, that's what it is. So, um, again, going back to this guy. Um, well, the reason why I got it so cheap, well, I don't know if you could say cheap. But there does seem to be, and the owner told me this, so I knew it. It's not a scratch. It's just a, the coating. Um, there's a two millimeter uh, part that the coating uh, came off. Little circle. Now, the good thing is it's very close to the edge, which makes it less noticeable in the eyepiece of camera. Um, in fact, even to, with the eye, let's, let's just say that, with the eye, you will not see zero or any difference in a two millimeter circle um, at all. Maybe the camera might pick up half a percent, but that's why this little, again, it's not a scratch. It just looks like the coating, um, maybe a scratch of the coating and it came off, but um, Anyway, that, that little thing there probably made the value of this guy lose probably $3,000 off. If it didn't have that, it probably would be $3,000. What's nice about this guy, again, this is what I was talking about. For a six inch size, for a six inch size, that is probably a perfect length, I think, F7. And this guy has a four inch focuser which is, oh my God, this thing is huge. I've never seen a four inch focuser. Um, or actually my Mead um, ED made in the US one, I think it might have a four inch focuser yet, but it wasn't this good as far as quality wise. Uh, there's like a little lever here. Okay, it's the locking mechanism. Um, and then there's some, you know, put a finder here. Um, you know, the, the Takahashi focusers always, to me, felt like, maybe I could just tweak it a little bit. It feels okay, but on like the other models I had, the TSA, uh, the 120, and the 102, it just wasn't good enough for me. That's the downfall that I think Takahashi has is their focusers. However, this one, being on such a beast, is actually really good. I'm not going to say as good as a Moonlight or a Feather Touch focuser, but it's still almost perfect. Um, the only thing is maybe I can adjust it down here, and then it would be near perfect. Now, the only thing, I know the guy, 
uh, did tell me is that uh, I don't have an adapter. I'm just going to put stuff back so no dust gets in. Uh, that's the last thing you want to do on something this big and expensive. Uh, okay, there. Yeah, now that nothing, no dust can get in, um, I got to find an adapter that brings it down from the four inch to a two inch. Otherwise, I can't really use it. Um, and then the other box that he sent me has the rings. Um, I think it comes with two, uh, like a Los Mandy's rail, a Vixen rail, a couple other things. So I'm going to check that out too. Um, I'm not sure if there's anything else in these three. It's come like a triple box. There's a lot of styrofoam down here. However, I don't think so. I think this is just, because I think the box says 65 pounds. So I think, oh, there's a, a manual type of thing. Here, now I see what it needs. Now I know the piece it needs. Um, that's really it. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the Sky Watcher, and we'll start right beside it. Okay, so let's look at these side by side. I pretty much have them, well, almost. Uh, pretty much have these side by side. But as you can see, the dew cap, see how much thicker the dew cap is, even the whole body. I mean, they're both six inches. Okay, it is a little shorter, but not by much. But I guess the Takahashi is F7.3, and that one's 7.8. So you're only talking about 0.7 of, an, of a focal ratio difference but as you can see the the tube is just so much you know that's probably a seven inch tube this is probably at least an eight inch tube this dew cap's probably nine inches it's just so much bigger that's why this guy is that much heavier here's the focuser now let me just flip it over so four inch focuser that's the coarse focuser and the fine focuser you can see it's and then this is the locking nut. I guess it's uh, never seen it there. Usually it's over here, but I guess it works. So again, um, that's what this guy looks like. Um, that's it. Anyway, guys, thanks for uh, Staying with me and watching me unpack the new Takahashi uh, six inch uh, TOA. Uh, basically, this is like a dream scope, I guess, to some people. Um, and that's it. So I'll probably be selling that guy. But before I do, I am actually gonna test them side by side and see what I see difference. Uh, how does Jupiter, Saturn, Mars look in it? Uh, comparing to now I know this is a Chinese made one uh, but however it's still not cheap this guy with tax is uh, I don't know close to thirty five hundred dollars um, so it's not too cheap but you know it's only a doublet ED and this one's a triplet uh, type of thing 53 glass so of course this is gonna outclass it but I just you know let's test it out they're both refractors this one's 1200 millimeter focal length this one's 1100, so they're very close. 100 millimeter focal length, that's it. Uh, the lens is both six inch. Uh, yes, this is a triplet, that's a doublet. But uh, let's let's compare and see, um, could the Skywatcher hold up? Well, I'll, I'll do a video on that for sure before I sell this guy. Anyway, cheers. Comment, like, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next uh, video. Joe Jaguar, out.